Hey everyone, this lesson is on chickenpox, otherwise known as varicella. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what this condition is. We're also going to talk about some of the signs and symptoms of this condition. We'll also discuss how we can diagnose it and how we can treat it. So chickenpox, as many of us know, is a very common condition that is caused by an infection with the varicella zoster virus. Varicella zoster virus is one of eight herpes viruses, and it's actually human herpes virus 3. Varicella zoster virus is a double-stranded DNA virus, and the way this infects an individual is by gaining entry into nasopharyngeal tissue, eventually leading to viremia or virus in the blood. So what happens is that the virus becomes airborne from nasal secretions or vesicle secretions from an infected individual. Those airborne viruses can then be picked up by the nasopharyngeal tissue of another individual and allowing entry of the virus. And as many of us know, this is a very highly contagious virus. So when an individual does become infected, there is a long incubation period. This incubation period can last upwards of 21 days, but it's usually around 15 days. So after an individual becomes infected with the virus, it takes around 15 days for an individual to show signs and symptoms. When they do begin to show signs and symptoms, they have eruption of vesicles. And we'll talk about more about that in the next couple of slides. But I also want to talk about the infective period, when an individual can infect other individuals. So this occurs between one to two days pre-eruption, so one to two days before they begin to have eruption of vesicles, and it lasts up to five days post-eruption or after about five days after they have had their last vesicle eruption. So this can last for a very long time, even after they have stopped having vesicular eruptions. So what happens generally is that a virus gains entry through the nasal pharyngeal tissue of an individual, and it can multiply in regional lymph nodes. This occurs between days four to six. Afterwards, the virus leads to a primary viremia. There is virus in the blood, and then the virus enters into the reticuloendothelial system, or RES, and then eventually you will actually have another phase of viremia, which we call secondary viremia. And this occurs at around day nine. And after this, after the incubation period completes, we start to see eruption of vesicles. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of chickenpox? Well, there is actually a prodrome of symptoms. And what I mean by prodrome is that there are symptoms prior to the eruption of the chickenpox vesicles. So these symptoms generally involve fever, malaise, so very fatigued, pharyngitis, so a sore throat, and decreased appetite. So very similar to any other viral infection. And the eruption of vesicles occurs one to three days after the beginning of these prodromal symptoms. And the vesicles are described as being on an erythematous base. And what that means is that there is redness on the skin with a vesicle on top of it. So in this image here, you can see these little vesicles that are on top of an erythematous base. And the key to chickenpox is that these vesicles are all in different stages of healing. So what happens is that there are successive eruptions of vesicles, groups of vesicles in chickenpox. And over time, some of these begin to heal while others begin continue to erupt. And what we see is there are different stages of healing with regards to vesicles. And this is very key to the diagnosis of chickenpox. Because there are successive groups of vesicles erupting, they are all occurring at different times, which means they are all healing at different times. And we see different stages of healing. And this is a key characteristic in distinguishing chickenpox from other types of skin lesions. So we see groups of polymorphic skin lesions. Polymorphic just means that the groups of skin lesions all look different. And another key characteristic of chickenpox is that these vesicles are very puritic, which means that they are very itchy. And what happens is the eruption generally ceases after about four days. So when the eruption of the vesicles starts, it takes about four days before it all completes. And the vesicles can be widespread but most of the time they are on the face and the trunk. So I just want to just delve in a bit more in detail with regards to the stages of skin lesions in chickenpox. So at first, what you'll see is that macules begin, and these can occur within 24 hours of the finishing of the incubation period that occurs again around 15 days. These macules will then rapidly progress into papules. Papules are raised, so you'll start to see them 
pop up. The papules will then form into vesicles, fluid-filled vesicles. And then eventually these vesicles will erupt and crust over, becoming crusted macules slash papules. So this is the general stages of chickenpox lesions. So how do we make the diagnosis and how do we treat chickenpox? The diagnosis of chickenpox is often a clinical diagnosis. We see children that are exposed to other children that have similar vesicles in different stages of healing. We can make the diagnosis of chickenpox. Other ways of diagnosing chickenpox include polymerase chain reaction or PCR to detect viral DNA. We can also do direct fluorescence antibody, and we can also do serologies more to assess for immunity. So you can detect immunoglobulin G against varicella zoster virus. So this can tell you that an individual has been exposed to chickenpox or has received a vaccine, and this can help you determine immunity to chickenpox. So how do we treat chickenpox? If a child has chickenpox and they are less than 12 years of age, generally speaking, it is a self-limited infection and resolves spontaneously. So treatment is supportive for these individuals. We let these individuals resolve spontaneously. For other individuals older than 12 years of age, we can use valacyclovir or acyclovir to treat these individuals. And I alluded to it briefly before, but there is a way we can help reduce the severity of chickenpox or reduce the rates of chickenpox, and that is through prevention using the vaccine, MMRV, mumps, measles, rubella, and varicella vaccine. It doesn't always protect all children from chickenpox, but it can reduce rates significantly. Usually about 20% or one in five children will still develop chickenpox if they are exposed to varicella zoster virus. And even if they do develop chickenpox, it is often a milder form of the condition. So less lesions, less duration of illness, and less complications. So what are the complications of chickenpox? Some of the complications include secondary bacterial infections. So if we break the skin, if we break the barrier of skin, we can have secondary bacterial infections like empidigo. We can also get congenital varicella syndrome. Congenital varicella syndrome is something that can occur if there is an infection during pregnancy. Other complications include encephalopathy. So some individuals can have acute cerebellar ataxia and diffuse encephalitis. Pneumonia is a very rare complication, but it can occur and can lead to hospitalizations as well. And shingles is something that we think about often later in life. So shingles can occur when an individual becomes older and immunocompromised. So what happens is the varicella zoster virus remains dormant in dorsal root ganglia. So it lays dormant and it is suppressed by the immune system. So even if you clear the chickenpox virus, it remains dormant in the dorsal root ganglia suppressed by your immune system. But what happens is it becomes reactivated during immunosuppression, whether that is due to age, other comorbidities, or some immunosuppressive drugs, this can lead to reactivation of this virus and a shingles infection. So if you want to learn more about shingles, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you want to learn more about other dermatological conditions, please check out my dermatology playlist. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.